Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on Unbox Tech Bytes. Today we're going to be dealing with something slightly different. We're going to be looking at a C5 error that occurred from the Q codes on my new Asus X670E build. If I could ask if you haven't already, please do take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. It's greatly appreciated by myself and it'll allow me to keep on providing content for you guys. As I let the build video play here in the background, I'll delve into what led to this error and eventually to how we got this resolved. So after the fourth day of stress testing using AD64, running some overclockings, playing the games to their max settings and just burning in the CPU, RAM and the other components on the board, it crashed whilst I was playing Warhammer Darktide. It completely froze the system. It would not let me use my mouse, keyboard, no input, no output. I restarted the system and this is when I noticed the first issues. Um, we got a Q code of 14 and it was hanging around on 14 for a very long time. Now this is the pre-memory CPU initialization um, to let us know that that had started. Now with 128 gigabytes of RAM, I thought, okay, I'll leave this a little while and see how we go. And then it threw out another error. It threw out Q code 15, which is the pre-memory system agent initialization that had started. With both of these Q codes being memory related, it gave me a good starting point for the investigation to try and resolve the error. My first thought was maybe I hadn't given it long enough to post because 128 gigabytes of RAM in the first few days of a new build can sometimes take a fair amount of time to load up. Sadly, this didn't turn out to resolve the issue and still an hour and a half later, we were still stuck with the error code. So I decided that I'd remove two of the four sticks of RAM just to see if it was a timing issue. Yet again, an hour and a half later, we still hadn't posted and we were faced with our Q code 15. Outside one last ditch attempt, let's remove the third stick of RAM to see if that works. Now this time it did. It posted and it loaded up Windows 11. The only problem was, obviously, it was only 32 gigabytes of RAM when I wanted the 128 gigabytes. So I decided that I would pop in a second stick of RAM. Now this time it went through the load up sequence and it got caught on a new error, C5. Looking at the Q code table, I couldn't find the C5 error in there. After a bit of searching, I found that the C5 error is yet again a memory related issue. I had one more trick up my sleeve before I really needed to start getting my thinking cap on, and this was to clear the cosmos. Sadly, this again did not resolve the issue and the C5 error remained. But at this point, it was starting to get a little bit frustrated. A new £10,000 build, and I wasn't being able to actually load up all of the memory that I wanted to. I ruled out any defective sticks of RAM by trying them one by one in just the one DIMM slot, and each time it posted and loaded up Windows, no problem. So my second thought was, right, if this motherboard is so new, maybe the information on the BIOS wasn't as up to date as it should be for all of the RAM profiles that were on the market at that current time. I went over to Asus website and to the support section for the motherboard and there I could see that there was a BIOS update waiting. Now, I had nothing else left to try at this point. As I said, it was starting to get quite frustrating. So I loaded up the updated BIOS onto a memory stick, converted it into a readable file, and then popped that into my machine, and then loaded up the BIOS through EasyFlash. After the flashing process had been undertaken, it restarted the machine. So now it was time to try with two sticks of RAM. Great, it was showing that my two sticks of RAM were there, 64 gigabytes in operation. But what I did notice was that the clock speed was running only at about two thirds of its potential. I popped in the four slots, restarted, and yet again, the clock speed was running a lot slower than it should be. So I went into my BIOS, and there I could see that now I had various options for the RAM that I'd installed and I could actually specifically select what clock speed it should be running at and I could also select if I wanted any of the AMD Expo profiles initiated. Saved off my changes, restarted the machine, loaded up Windows and there we go. I finally had all four sticks of RAM, 128 and they were all running the desired clock speeds. Since then I have not had any issues and now the system continues to run as it should. So that's it for this video. Just a quick recap, if you do have a motherboard that is new to the market, it's definitely worth checking out the support page on the manufacturer's website to see if there is a BIOS update available. Take care guys and girls, I'll catch you next time.